Hi, my name is Frederick, and today we will be talking about the Nikon Z30. This little guy. It's an entry-level mirrorless camera, and it's mostly targeted at content creators. I have this camera for over a year now, and I wanted to share my experience. So let's dive in right after the intro. Before we start properly, I want to say that this video isn't sponsored by anyone. I bought the gear with my own money and this is my own opinion. So why did I get the Nikon Z30? Well, I used to have a Nikon D7000 and I used it for video productions, but also for my home photography. The camera was very decent. It was one of the first one with decent video, but it showed it age and it only could do full HD and it didn't have a clean output, so I couldn't record with an external recorder, like the Atomos Ninja, for example. So I moved on to the Panasonic GH5, which I'm using right now to record this video. And I made a whole uh, video rig out of it with the Atomos Ninja, external battery, and uh, a matte box and things like that. But Obviously, if you're building a rig like that, it's going to get bigger and heavier. I wanted to have a second camera, which was really lightweight and easy to use and preferably could use my Nikon lenses. Lightweight means mirrorless, so I was basically looking for a mirrorless camera. Let's quickly talk about specs. It's a very lightweight and sturdy little camera. It has a ASPC sensor with 20 megapixels. It can record up to 4K video with 30 frames a second or Full HD with 120 frames a second. It does only do 8-bit video 420, but that is kind of expected with a budget camera like this one. It does have a front tele lamp, which is rare in, on these cameras, but it lacks a headphone jack which, you know, for checking your sound is not that convenient. Let's talk about what I like about this camera. It's very lightweight and with a kit lens, which is a 16 to 50 millimeter lens, it is very compact because to use it, you have to kind of slide out the lens itself, but when not in use, it becomes much smaller and so easier to transport. The kit lens has a aperture of 3.5 to 6.3, which is not very fast, but it's okay for most situations. The second thing I like about this camera is the flip screen. And as you may know, the Z30 is derived from the Z50, which doesn't have a flip screen, which is more aimed at photography. But for video, this is actually rather nice. It doesn't have an electronic viewfinder, but then again, if you're focusing mainly on video, I think a flip screen is more convenient than having an electronic viewfinder. So for me, that works. The third thing I like about this camera is that it does have a setting for video and photography, and you can easily flip between the two. So if you set something up for video, it will retain the settings that you have set for video. When you switch over to photography, you can set completely different settings. So a fourth point that I like about this camera is the autofocus. Now, as you may know, if you have a run and gun situation, autofocus becomes rather important. And this camera can hold its focus quite well, even when you move through the shot. So one of the points that I don't really like about it is the stabilization. It is okay, but not great. When walking behind people or following, trying to follow people, it, it feels a little bit shaky. It's not too bad, but yeah, it could, there's cameras that do a way better job than this one. The second thing that I don't like is that it doesn't come with an external charger. You have to charge your batteries inside the camera with a USB-C adapter. Now, USB-C is great. Don't get me wrong, that is terrific, but I got two batteries and I can't charge the second one while shooting with the first one. So yeah, it's a little bit inconvenient and obviously I could solve this by buying an external uh, uh, charger, but obviously it would have been nice if that was included. 
So the battery life is decent, but I've noticed that when charging with a low power power supply, it could take a while. And if I'm actually charging it with like a laptop charger, which has also a USB-C, it tends to feel faster. So what about accessories? Well, the camera works fine without any accessories, but there's a couple of them that I really like and that I bought myself to make it a little bit better. So one of the things that you should really get if you're recording video with the internal microphones is this little wind muff from SmallRig. Now you will notice that I will be talking about SmallRig quite a bit, but I really like their product. And no, this is not sponsored by SmallRig, but I have so many uh, extra bits and bobs for adding to the camera from SmallRig that I must say, I can only recommend it. They're not that expensive in comparison to some other gear and it is really well built. So this little muff can fit right on top the hot shoe of the camera and it will cover the two microphones. So there's a stereo microphone on top of it and it will cover it. And that will make the wind noise much less. And it's very noticeable when not putting it on. And so I did a lot of recording, you know, recording my family, uh, making vacation videos. And with a little mint muff, it was very usable audio. So uh, that is very nice because usually, you know, when wind comes in, that will ruin your audio and you can have really nice pictures, but if the audio is ruined, that is a pity. So to quickly give you an idea, I have taken the camera outside and I'm walking at a very slow pace, but I have connected the wind muff up to the microphones. And uh, so that's the sound you get straight out of the camera with a wind muff. Um, so it is a little bit windy today, not too much though, but you can hear the, I can hear the rustling leaves. I don't know if you can hear it on the camera, but uh, it will give you an, an indication how it sounds with the wind muff. Obviously, if you use an external microphone, then it's not really necessary. It does have a mi microphone jack. You can put in a shotgun mic or you can use wireless mics. So that's uh, definitely in its possibilities. So if you want to kit out your camera a little bit further, I do recommend you, you get a cage. So SmallRig makes really nice cages. And I think this Z30 specific cage is a good example of that. Um, you can put top handles on it, side handles, uh, other kind of accessories. But what I really like about this one specifically is that it has a little screwdriver attached to it with a magnet. So it's easily to take your camera in and out of the cage. And you don't need to bring along any screwdrivers. It just is here with the magnet. So it's always on there. Very convenient. Nice, nice job, small rig. I quickly screwed on the cage and it took me only like 30 seconds. The cage protects the camera when it gets a bump. And one of the first things you should get if you get a cage is a top handle. This makes it so much easier to make low shots uh, or stabilize the camera in your hand. And so you have less shaky footage. Another accessory which I really like is the FTZ2 from Nikon themselves. It allows you to connect F-mount lenses to the Z-mount fitting of the Z30. And it even allows you to use autofocus if your lens does have a motor. If it's an older lens without a motor, unfortunately, you have to focus manually. So an accessory which I would have loved that gave more capabilities to the Z30 is uh, the Atomos Ninja 5 external recorder. Unfortunately, the HDMI output is only 420 and 8 bits. So there is no real gain there. The only thing that I can think of is extra recording time because the Z30 does only two hours and five minutes and also use better codecs for editing. But, you know, then again, an Atomos Ninja 5 costs as much as the Z30 and you're gonna double up the weight to carry it around. So yeah, no real benefit there. Okay, for my final opinion on the Z30. Over the year, this camera has served me really well. I took it on vacations. I've shot B-roll with it in professional situations. So it worked. It is simple, easy to set up and very lightweight. 
Obviously, if you want to go more professional, it does lack professional features. But if you're starting out as a YouTuber, this is a very capable camera. Not super expensive. With the kit lens, you're ready to go. You don't need much else than the wind muff, in my opinion, or maybe an external microphone. But that's about it. And you're ready to go to shoot those videos. Uh, as a second camera, I thought it was very good. Um, obviously, if you go higher in price point, you're going to find much better cameras than this one. But for this price point, I think it is a really capable little camera. That's it for the Nikon Z30. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them as quickly as possible. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I'm trying to get to those thousand subscribers and your subscription could help me quite a lot. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.